Hello, hi, I hope you guys are doing awesome. My name is Kristana, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell. On this channel, we do a lot of woodworking, DIY, furniture flips, all the things, fun, fun, fun. And I really love color, so usually everything is super colorful, usually. Sometimes I, it's not. Like the video I did earlier this week, it was white. But, you know, anyways, we're keeping it, we like to keep it going, you know? I like to keep you guys on your toes. If you're not new here, welcome back, friends and family. I appreciate you guys every single day, so thank you. The piece we're gonna be working on today is a custom. It is a dresser, and we're going to do a little bit of aging on it. We'll be using vintage duck egg for it, so it's not gonna be super colorful, but it is gonna be a complete transformation. So we will be building a new base for this, which is something that's been wildly popular, and I've been doing that a lot, but that's, you know, a lot of the clients, that's what they want. So we're gonna be building a new base for this, but I will be cutting the legs a little bit differently. So thank you to the person who suggested the DIY wife tutorial. I am going to cut the legs the way she does. I'll do everything else the same. And so it'll be a little bit different. So if you wanna stick and watch that. And then also this top is like a Formica laminate. And so we need to prep this a little bit differently than we would a wood piece. So you'll see that. We're gonna change the hardware. It's just gonna be a completely different piece when we're done. So if you guys wanna see that, stay here. First thing I did was remove all the drawers. So that way I could remove that bottom trim piece on the front because we are going to build a completely new base for this piece. I'm using my mini pry bar and my claw hammer and I'm just going to knock that pry bar underneath that trim with my hammer and I'm going to use the leverage to pull it up so that way I can remove this bottom trim piece in the front and then I'm going to cut the sides so that this dresser will sit completely flat on the floor. I'm gonna take my construction tee and I am going to actually mark with tape where I'm going to cut. And there's a few reasons why I'm gonna do this. One, because this is darker wood and I won't be able to see the pencil as well so I can see the tape. And also when you tape down the area and then you cut next to it, it helps so that it doesn't splinter. Somebody else had suggested this to me and I had done it before and I didn't do it a few videos ago, but it really does work. So it helps so that when you are cutting that wood that at that cut line, it doesn't splinter and chip. And also I can see where I need to cut better instead of trying to focus on a pencil mark that is on dark wood. I will do this on both sides. And what I'm trying to do is get this dresser to sit flat on the ground so that it gets ready for our new base that we're gonna build. I will be using my circular saw to cut along that edge to get that excess wood off. I'm gonna use a two by two for the legs and I'm gonna use one by threes for the back, front and side trim pieces that are gonna go across on this base that we're gonna build. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. So someone suggested DIY wife and how she cuts her legs. And so I'm gonna cut them at the angles the way she does it, but everything else is gonna be the same. I set my angle at 22 and a half degrees because I'm able to set different degrees on my miter saw. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm measuring how, what the length of the legs will be. So it may be different for you. This is just measuring the length right now. And then I'm going to double check with my measuring tape. Remember, measure 27 times, only cut once. If you've watched any of my videos, you know why I'm doing this next part. So I'm gonna take the one by three that is gonna be the cross brace and I'm going to overlap it on top of the leg. So the top line is where the leg will start and this bottom part that I am measuring is 
the angle, the bottom angle. We want that angle to start underneath that second line, which is where the one by three will be, because we don't want it to, if you cut it any shorter above that line where the one by three is, it's gonna have a gap and it's gonna look bad. So when you leave that angle at the bottom like that, and you make it underneath that second line where that one by three was measured, everything will be flush and square. Once I am done with that, I'm gonna set my miter saw back at zero degrees and I'm gonna cut the length off. I like this way a little bit better, especially for beginners, because if you're not experienced with saws, it could, it, it's just safer. So do it this way. So thank you to the person who suggested the video to me. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the two back legs. They're just gonna be straight. They're gonna be the same length as the front legs, except we're not going to do an angle. So we don't need to get crazy with those. And I'm going to place them all in place so that I know that they all fit. They're all good. And then we're going to measure the side trim pieces because each dresser and piece is going to be different that you do the base with. This is going to vary. So what I do is I take my one by three and I bumped it up against the right leg and now I am pushing and I pushed it back a little bit so that I can set the left leg where it needs to be and I can just mark where they meet at that 90 degrees and when I cut it now that's the length it needs to be and I can dry fit it and you see how it fits perfectly. I like doing this versus messing with a measuring tape because if you mess with a measuring tape it could move and all the things. So I just, I, I like to do it this way. And that's how I did the back and the sides and I'm dry fitting right now to make sure everything's good. And now I'm going to mark, I am going to be using my Craig jig and I'm going to be making pocket holes on all the side trim pieces. And so I'm going to put two pocket holes on each end. And so I'm just marking it with my pencil. That way I know where it needs to be. And now I'm going to use my 720 Craig Jig Pro. And this is a gauge to see what the thickness is of the wood and where you're going to set your Craig Jig. So this is at three fourths. And so you're going to set your drill bit. There's a stopper on there and you're going to un, you're going to loosen it up and then you're going to measure or you're going to set it at that three fourths. So you can see that window, there's a little circle window and you're going to put that up to the three fourths. You're going to tighten it. And that is where your wood is going to stop. So whatever that gauge that we're using to tighten that says, that's where you want to set this stopping washer. So that way you get the perfect pocket holes. And now you're going to put it into your drill and then this setup, the 720 pro is awesome. It's got a clamp that you can clamp your wood and you're gonna line it up. So you take the wood, put it in there and you're gonna clamp it down. And then you just take your drill and I like to pulsate it, it's easier. So you go down and go up, go down and go up a little bit. It helps get that wood debris out of there and it makes it better. So here's a pocket hole right here and then I'm gonna do it again and I'm gonna do this on all of the sideboards. Again, this is a new Craig jig and I super, super like it. I've worked with other ones, but this one is just so easy and it's worth every penny. Once I'm done with all my pocket holes, you want to glue and screw everything. So once you're done with your pocket holes, you want to take a one and a quarter inch screw. The, I use the Craig screws and you're going to screw them into your base. You're going to screw the side pieces into the feet. And I'm sorry, my hair was down. So my hair gets in the way a little bit. I know I should have pulled it up. But you're gonna line everything up so that when you screw it, it's perfect. And so right here, you're going to kind of just push that back flush since there's only one screw. Make sure everything is lined up and then put your second screw in there and you're just gonna continue to put it all together, assemble it all together all the way around. Once you have your base assembled to each other, you're going to drill some countersunk holes. I'm using the Craig jig drill bit, and I'm just going to go about halfway down that side piece. And I'm going to take a two inch screw and I'm going to screw the base, uh, the base that we just built to the base of the dresser. 
and you can notice right here, do you see where the pocket holes are? I went a little bit further past those pocket holes and made those holes. And now I am taking the screws and I am screwing it into the base so that it is affixed and it is nice and solid and in there. Okay, everybody, so I'm about to pull out a tool that I have not used with you guys, and this is a hand planer. So here to the left is the drawer. The, there's two drawers that were like this. The left is before, the right is after I planed it. And the reason why is because one, I don't like that design, and two, I'm going to make fluted drawers. And you can see right here, those trim, is not gonna look good on there, and so I had to make sure I planed it down one so that that wood wasn't so thick and two so that these half rounds have a flat surface. I want to go over the hand planer with you really quick. So I'm showing you right now that that's where the, this is where the blade is and it turns. This is the bottom part that's going to sit flush with your surface. You want to make sure that you sit flush with, flush with your surface when you're using it. And when you're planing, you want to make sure you go completely past the surface because that blade is actually a little bit further back. If you stop, before you push it all the way, it will indent and not be even. Also, this is the safety trigger. You push that in in order to pull the trigger and have it start. This is where I put my vacuum in. Some planers have it. This one is really nice because I'm telling you, you want to hook up a shop vac with it if you can. It gets messy. And then this is the gauge that tells you how deep your blade will go. So how much do you want to take off the surface? So the first thing I do, and by the way, this is unplugged. So if you're messing around with it, you're changing anything, make sure it's unplugged. So you want to attach your vacuum. That's what I did. You want to adjust the height of your blade. And I'm about to show you here in a second. This is the lowest on the blade. And I am going to plane this part right here so that you can see how I do it. Basically planing this is going to take down a lot of this surface area so that way I can have a thinner piece of drawer front and it's going to be flat and I'm going to take that design off of there as well. So now I'm going to adjust it and I'm going to go to the deepest cut, the one that takes off the most, and I'm going to go across on the other side and I'm going to show you here in a second what the difference is. You can see on camera how this will go a little bit deeper than the other side, just so you can see what I'm talking about when I say adjust it. You can even see now to the right that it's taking off more of that wood anyways. So using a planer, you want to make sure you're doing it on real wood. Don't take a planer to something else. <laughs> just take it to wood for now, okay? Now, you see right here how it took off more and then the other one was thinner. So now I'm just going to plane down this drawer top until it's flat and I've taken off enough that I can use these quarter rounds to create a fluted front. And so we're just going to keep planing it. This is a hand planer. They do have planers where you can put pieces of wood through it, but this is something that I really like to use. It comes in handy, especially when you have to take quite a bit off and you don't want to sand everything off. I took my three by four electric gray and a 120 grit, and I'm just gonna smooth out the surface just to make sure that everything is level. And that way when we do our fluted front with our half rounds, 
hands. It's going to sit nice and flat on this drawer front and it's going to look awesome. So the next step is for me to measure what size do I need these half rounds. I'm going to measure the width of the drawer front so that I know how long these need to be. And as you can imagine, we are going to have to cut a ton a ton of these but i'm going to show you how to make it easier as long as you have a miter saw this is going to be easy peasy so know how long you need to do it and then cut yourself one board or one piece of trim so this is the piece of trim that i cut now take your miter saw and put the blade down make sure it's unplugged and then butt that guiding piece up against it this is our first one this is this is the length that we need that trim right okay so that back piece, I'm gonna just slide that off. I'm gonna take a scrap piece of wood and I'm gonna butt that up against that trim piece that we have cut so that we know that that is the length it needs to be, okay? I'm gonna flip it up here in a second. I'm gonna take a clamp, so I'm just using my Craig jig clamp because it's small and strong, and I'm gonna clamp that block of wood in place. So now, any time that my saw comes down and I push those pieces of trim against that piece of wood, it is the exact size. I don't have to keep measuring it. I don't have to do anything. So I'm going to cut one, make sure it's the same size. So we're testing it, make sure that it's perfect and it is perfect. So I'm going to take it up against the one that we, the first one we cut. And if they are perfect, then I know that we have a good fit. Okay, good. Great. They're great. So now, all I have to do is just cut a million of these and I just have to butt up that half round to that piece of wood and boom, it's a lot easier. Just don't get complacent when you're doing this and make sure that you're keeping your fingers away from the blade. So this one was a little bit short on the other side and so I put my hand on the other side to hold that piece of trim in place. And now I just cut five of them within 30 seconds. Be careful, please. Now I need to figure out how many half rounds I need. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pieces of trim and I'm going to use a speed square and I'm gonna line that up against the side of the drawer where it's gonna start. I'm gonna clamp it in place and then I'm just going to dry fit and place a bunch of my half rounds down. And I'm going to, I cut a bunch, but I knew it wasn't enough. So I'm gonna place those all. I'm going to cut a few more and then I'll know how many I'm going to need. I think it ended up being about 38 of these and it actually fit perfect, perfectly in there. And I did a tiny bit of spacing, but later on you're going to see I'm going to take some trim caulk and I am going to put that in between so that way you won't see any of the spaces. But I'll show you that in a little bit. So right now we need to make sure how many half rounds we need for the front of our drawers. Okay, we have figured it out, they are all in place, and now I'm going to start putting them in place permanently. So what I need to do is I'm going to glue the first one in place, and this is gonna be my guide so that I know that the rest of them are straight. So we're going to glue the actual piece of trim and we're gonna glue the surface, and then I'm going to take my staple nail gun that I bought. It's not super powerful, but it's electric so I can plug it in and I am going to nail these in place. Now it's not super powerful and so I'm going to probably have to hammer them and I'm going to use a nail set for each one of these. So this is where it gets tedious, but it's worth it. So I'm going to clamp these in place and I'm going to let it sit for about an hour so this one dries and that way when I go to put all the other ones on there, I know that they're straight and they are guided in the proper place. Okay, so I have to take my hammer, I'm gonna hammer them in place, I'm gonna take my nail set and I'm gonna set those down and I will be using a wood filler to fill those in so that we do have a smooth front. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a wood glue and I'm gonna put that and spread it on the front of this and I'm just going to 
place each piece of trim down. I'll probably do about four or five at a time, place them down, staple them or nail them in place and just continue on with this. And I'm gonna make sure that I hammer all the nails in and then I'm gonna do a nail set and make sure they're all recessed. Then after that, I'm gonna take Dixie Belle's Dixie Mud and I am going to fill all of the holes and then I will let it dry for about an hour and a half and then I'm going to take a super fine sandpaper with my three x four electric gray and I am going to smooth everything out. Okay, both drawer fronts are done and we are gonna put them in here and let them dry. And while they're drying, we are gonna clean this piece. So I'm taking Dixie Belle's White Lightning and I am going to clean the entire piece. The top of this is like a Formica, but I'm still gonna clean it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take Big Mama's Butter and the new scent of flannel and I'm gonna clean the inside and the outside and then once it's clean I'm going to put this flannel in here it's a wood conditioner and I'm going to just apply it it also makes it smell really nice and then I'm going to wipe it back instantly with a rag so that I get all the excess out so that way it's not sticky and just in there and I also cleaned the inside of all the drawers and I'm going to put this flannel on the inside of all the drawers as well I needed to take a second and show you the outside of the drawers and how dirty they were. So it's not so much that this piece was actually dirty, it's that I think long ago it came from a smoker and this is nicotine, I think, coming off of this. So this is why it is so important for you to make sure you clean your pieces. But because it was so dirty, I feel like I might need to use a blocking primer because I'm using a little bit lighter of colors on here and I don't want to have bleed through so you can see how dirty it is I cleaned it up and I went through it again this is after I went over it the first time and there's still a little bit of that dark coming off and dripping and you can see how dirty it is so this is the kind of piece and it's very rare that I will be using Dixie Belle's boss which is a blocking primer and Dixie Belle's slick stick which is a gripping adhesion primer both of them on one piece. I need to use the slick stick on the top because it is not real wood and I wanna make sure that my paint sticks. So the slick stick, I'm gonna roll it on top. You're gonna to do two coats of that. I'm gonna let it sit for 24 hours before I put the paint on there. And then I'm gonna use the gray boss and I'm gonna put that on the body of the piece. That way I don't have to deal with any kind of bleed through or tannins that may be caused by whatever that was that created that dirty, dirty water.
Sometimes when you are putting new things on old things, like a new base on an old dresser, you may have gaps. And so I'm gonna take some translucent caulk and I am going to put it along that crack and then I'm gonna spread it into there with my finger. So that way, when you paint it, you will not see that gap that's there. And we're gonna do the same thing to the drawer fronts as well. With the fluted drawer fronts, when you do this, it just makes it look nicer and it makes that everything, so there's no cracks and everything looks cohesive. Before we do this with the drawer fronts, I'm going to take my three x four electric ray and this is a super fine 10 millimeter pad and I'm going to take off all the excess wood filler so that way we can put that translucent caulk in the in between each half round and then it will be a much nicer finish and once we paint it it's going to all look like it's supposed to be there Once that step is dried, you are going to paint the entire body of this piece with vintage duck egg, which is a nice calming kind of old teal color. It's not super bright. It's kind of an earthy teal. I don't know how you would explain it, but I'm going to use this to paint the entire piece first before we go in with any kind of blending. When you're blending, you want to use a fine mist mister bottle, and then you wanna have a rag or paper towel, and then you're gonna need a clean, dry, neutral brush, and then you're gonna need a paintbrush for each color that you're using. So I am going to outline this drawer with Stormy Seas, which is a deep, kind of like a grayish green blue color. It's like a dark, it's like the match dark to the vintage duck egg. They just go really well together. So we are going to do kind of like a old aged, my client wants something that is kind of aged looking. So that's what kind of blend we're gonna do. This These colors are very similar to each other so it's not gonna be super dramatic and we will be using black wax. So I'm going to outline the drawer front with the Stormy Seas. Then I'm going to take my vintage duck egg and I'm going to overlap the Stormy Seas with that and then I'm going to make sure that I put it all in the center. You can start blending a little bit now instead of waiting. You can kind of do circles and just kind of feather it into each other. And then I'm going to make sure I spray in between coats just to keep that paint moving. And I'm going to put it in the center as well. Because the key to blending is having wet paint, but you don't want it too wet and you don't want it to catch. So that's really the key. And then I'm going to take the Stormy Seas brush and I didn't put any more paint on it. And I'm just gonna kind, of, kind of feather it around the outside of that drawer. So that way I can help the blending process and kind of melt these colors into each other again. So the center piece, I'm gonna mist it. And the center for a highlight is going to be fluff. 
And so we're going to use fluff the color and I'm going to put that in the center of the piece and I'm going to kind of just feather that out. And this is going to create a highlighted look in the center and I'm going to go in with circles and I'm going to just blend that already into that vintage duck egg. So you're just kind of adding the paint and you're already blending it in. We're using the wet paint to get a good blend as well as misting a little bit of water. So now I'm taking the vintage duck egg brush. I didn't put any more water on it and I'm just going to go in circles around where I had already put the vintage duck egg. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the stormy seas brush. I didn't add any more paint. I'm just going to go in circles around it. And what this is doing is this is helping these paints blend a little bit better with each other. I know it looks cloudy and it doesn't look blended right now, but in a second, we're going to mist the entire front and we're going to take our clean, dry, neutral brush and we are going to feather everything together. So we're going to go horizontal and then usually with this, I'll go horizontal, I'll go vertical, you can go diagonal, you can go in circles, and this is going to feather everything together. What I usually do halfway through is I wipe off the brush so that I get any of the excess paint off to keep it kind of a clean, dry, brush and we're just feathering everything together and softening it and these colors are very similar so they're really easy to blend together but it's going to give us kind of a vintage look that is what my client wants I'm going to reuse the old handles on the bottom four drawers so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take an 80 grit sandpaper and i am going to strip that finish off so i can get down to the raw wood which is a light color just like the oak base so i used oak for the bottom and these dot these the middle of this hardware matches that perfectly so i am going to strip down all four of those and we are going to use those reuse those but before we do my client has more of a bronze look in her house. And so I got a kind of rubbed bronze, hammered bronze spray paint. And I am going to, after you see the difference, but I'm going to spray paint these little pools and then I'm gonna spray paint the ends of the old hardware so that it's all this bronze color. You need to make sure when you're spray painting hardware, one, that the hardware is clean, and two, you go over it lightly. So you see how I'm just doing it lightly? You don't want to go over top of it and just spray it on here. You want to just light, thin coat so that it's even. And once you have it all done, you need to make sure you seal it with a clear spray paint, and this will make sure that it doesn't chip. Then once you're done with that, you are able to reassemble everything. I wanted to give this piece a little bit more of a vintage look. So I'm taking Easy Peasy Spray Wax, which is a clear matte wax, and I am going to spray the entire piece down. So what this does is this seals the piece, but also it's going to create a little bit of a buffer in between my paint and the colored wax that I'm gonna put on. So it's gonna add a little bit of dimension, but it's not gonna soak too much into the paint. So I'm gonna take Dixie Belle's black wax, their best dang wax, and I'm going to just go around the edges so I can just darken that stormy seas up just a little bit to create a little more contrast and to give it a little bit more vintage look. So I'm going to apply it and I'm going to wipe it off and then it's going to make it a little bit darker. Once I was done with the black wax, I applied the top two 
drawer hardware. So I just used a little tab pools. I didn't want to take away from the fluted front. So I just used these little tab pools that we painted in bronze. I really like these for a nice clean look. And also if you have something really pretty on the drawer front, it doesn't take away. I am using satin clear coat and I'm going to seal all of the wood on the handles that we had stripped down. I'm going to seal the base of the piece as well, because that's raw wood. And that way, first of all the handles have protection and then that bottom has protection and then I'm going to take a blue sponge and I'm going to seal the top of this piece with the satin clear coat and I am going to show you right here how I do it I pour some of the satin on a little paper plate and then I dip the sponge on there and I just go up and down the piece and it's going to protect it Okay, everybody, this piece is done. The video is done. I hope you enjoyed it. Here is the piece. Remember, I always put staged pictures after we talk. Everything I use is in the description below. I hope you enjoy this. This is pretty major makeover. I'm hoping my client likes it. If you guys are not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, hang out with me. I do lots of videos. Come hang out with me. Come on, let's do it. All right, guys, have an amazing weekend. Happy creating, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, want to see it now. and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty